Travel and wine. What could be better? For the first time on Ukrainian television, we combined those two things into a unique project. A famous TV presenter and a well-known sommelier begin an unprecedented journey around the world. I saw you and got confused. I am excited. Where are we? Where are we going? How many times have we turned? You will see the whole process of winemaking. I have never seen that much foam in my life. From the vine that warms up in the sunlight in the vineyard, to bottled wine on store shelves. You will learn the secrets of how to distinguish true wine from fakes and how to choose the best wine. How to pour wine correctly, I don't tell anyone. Only at school at the third level. A cunning man, huh? <laughs> and you will be able to get an unbelievable prize yourself. Those who watch this episode must remember the password. Remember it precisely. But the first to come to the winery we visit in this episode, say the password and win the special prize. My heart is sinking. So are you ready to see the world through wine? Azalo is a small town that resembles a toy town, but be careful, you can see it all in half a day and fall in love for your entire life. Great! In old times, people of art were looking for and finding inspiration here. Asolo is also called the city of a hundred horizons, because at its highest point there are fantastic views. I am at a loss for words. But most importantly, they make incredible Prosecco here. Which the manufacturers recommend to drink almost all day since the morning. Okay, enough. At this time, I'm rushing, so to say, through the empty streets of Azolo to meet Vitaly. He set a meeting not just somewhere, but near the statue of a lion. There is a lion and there is a fountain, but unfortunately, there is no treasure, like in the famous movie. Here's our treasure. Hello. Oh, I saw you coming from the corner of my eye. Hello. You've chosen a nice place near the fountain. The town of Asolo exists thanks to this fountain. We came to the place where they make Prosecco. I went to see those vineyards and took a look at the technology. I recommend you to explore Asolo and find the highest point of the town. And? I really want you to see what the locals call a Venetian villa. And what about the password? Well, I have many tests to accomplish in one day. Yes, because there is going to be a tasting in the evening. But I'm inspired by Prosecco. <laughs> All right, bye. That's See you in the then. evening. See ya. Azolo is the place for wealthy Italians who can afford such expensive houses instead of dodges to go to and relax in the summer. They care about the architecture so much that they leave everything as is and live without cars. Every few people live here all year round. Mainly, there are businessmen, lawyers and doctors. Someone's child just born in Azolo. Apparently, it's a boy. I'll be waiting for you here. How many meters do you know? 900. Before going into the vineyards, I'm going to look at them from above. There is a place for those who like hang gliding near Asolo. The important thing is to put the equipment together correctly. Suppress the trembling in your legs and trust the instructor. The crowd here is international. Poles, Germans, French, all those who love extreme sports. Let's wait for some wind. My first flight in life without an engine. And did you notice? under a blue and yellow hang glider. Fifteen minutes of enjoyment and an almost soft landing. I'm speechless. Vitaly advised me to look at Azolo from the highest point, so up the stairs we go. In fact, specialists from all over the world come here to study the ancient architecture of this city, even from Japan. I can only see the roofs from here, and that tower appears to be the tallest structure. 
tourists are not allowed here, but one handsome man is already waiting for me. With keys, I hope. Bonjour now, all those keys in your hands. Yes, the mayor gave them to me. They're the keys to the tower. Can you ask the mayor for the keys every time you want to show the town to guests? <laughs> no, it's especially for you. Thank you very much. Shall we? Let's go. Maurizio is actually a local celebrity. He is an architect who has restored dozens of houses in the city. Hence, such privileges. I just love moments like this. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's very dark in here. <laughs> Going up the stairs is tough. <laughs> One more. <laughs> and we're still not at the top. <laughs> Why, it's very high. The bell will ring in seven minutes. At 12 o'clock? We we'll also call it the city of a hundred horizons. The scenery is beautiful here and the view is absolutely amazing. So is it true that tourists can't go up here? No, they are not allowed. Can I wait for seven minutes? I'm going to look at the scenery on my own. Thank you very much for taking me here and my greetings to the mayor. Thank you. And here's Monte Grappa. The Italians make exquisite writing instruments under this name. Further beyond these hills are the Alps. The last days of the First World War ended there. Wow. wow. But just once. Great. This is one cool bell. Almost 2,000 years ago, Roman legionaries rode this way on horses into a solo. And now I am going to meet my longtime acquaintance. The Dalbello products are among the most respected in Italy. They make exceptional Prosecco here. Buongiorno, Antonio. How are you doing? Please come in. Wow, how deep is it? Six meters. Bello del bello. Don't be afraid, you can step onto that glass. It's strong, it won't break. Antonio is passionate about his business. He's prudent not just to the quality of wine, but also to the design and names of his drinks. After all, it's his family's business, which was just a dream in his poor childhood. If the task is to look at Azolo from the highest point, then it must be completed. Oh, mama. oh mama mia! I hope I'm not going to fall down. Have you felt the majesty of Oslo yet? The Romans found it back in 100 AD. They built it on the hills to have an excellent view of the surrounding valleys. In the past, it was so that the enemy wouldn't sneak up on them. Now it's a perfect place for growing grapes. The very first place Antonio invited me to was his childhood home. And the brook of the Dalbello family was found near another ancient brook, as well as Antonio's first vineyards. This brook has been here since Roman times. It begins under the town of Asolo. And this vineyard was the first in the world to be classified as an Asolo Prosecco vineyard. The Glera grape variety got its name a long time ago. This authentic name is even in textbooks. This is the variety used to make fresh fruit wines that are good to drink throughout the day. This variety is only grown in the Veneto region and partly in the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. I feel very strong emotions here. It was here that my family was born, my story.
Here I began to understand my life and my goals. It was here that my first dreams of winemaking were born. And the first one, a solo Melissimato. I always remember my house and where I came from. My family was poor. And today we have a modern winery that produces unrivaled wine. The Dalbello family is like a powerful pillar you can see right now. We're strong, and that's why we have reached such heights. Beautiful words. And this is the church of the most famous ruler of Oslo, Catherine Cornaro. It seems as every beautiful city becomes as charismatic as that woman named Catherine. She is still loved and respected here almost to the point of fanatism. Catherine's features are even seen in the image of Madonna. Marco Carnaro, the father of Catherine and one of the Venetian rulers, married her off at the age of 14, exchanging her for the right of ownership of Cyprus. The church was built in the 1500s when Catherine Cornaro, already an ex-queen of Cyprus, was sent into exile to Azolo. The distance from the capital city of the Treviso province became the center of art and culture. Catherine invited famous artists, musicians and poets here. That time is called the Golden Age of Azolo. However, it only lasted for 20 years. In the end, Catherine was poisoned. This is another one of Antonio's vineyards, although he still leases the land. We have worked on these vineyards for two years. We had a lot of trouble planting the vines. The weather was very rainy. Antonio was once a hard worker and now he's delighted to give us a tour of the vineyard. White sweet wine was once produced here and white filtered wine was created here at the time. They just removed excess yeast from the wine and so it remained sweet. The history of this villa dates back to the 1800s. The old winery still exists inside. It's beautiful. This land and the corner of villa is owned by a wealthy Italian family. Count Conero and his family sometimes come here on vacation. Relaxing near the pool here is very nice. It offers a fantastic view. The pool is very nice. No one would tell us how much this paradise costs, but to keep the villa in good condition, the Count spends about 20,000 euros a month. While searching for a Venetian house, as that's one of my tasks, I stumbled upon the oldest house in Oslo. Look, they keep it as a symbol and don't touch a single brick. but I think I have to go this way. What is special about houses in Venetian style is that they have ordinary rich facades and they fit into the overall appearance of the city. My name is Larissa and I'm Anna. I was born and raised here. Now I come here every summer. When I was young, I loved taking care of the garden. I have an assistant from Ukraine. She helps me now. The great sculptor Bernini once visited these places. You can see the garden through this arch. The garden itself was created by the project of Maestro Malipiero. You can take a walk through it. <laughs> In a gardens are a special feature of such houses. They are very elegant and well ordered. This combination of art and nature, peace and luxury is enchanting. It seems as if a Roman partition is sitting in the garden deep in these thoughts. But no, it's Hercules with the three-headed Cerberus. Myths and reality are next to each other. One of the important elements of our winery is that our grapes are one floor above. 
Thus they fall into these containers under the influence of gravity. So we don't have to put additional stress on our grapes. The highest level of alcohol is 11% and the lowest is 10.5%. May I open these doors? Sure. Put your hand here. The temperature here reaches 5 degrees. This is required to lighten our wine. One such container holds 10,000 liters. Pay attention to the amount of foam. I have never seen anything like that before. It is incredible. I already want to try it so much that... It's as if I'm scooping up some ice cream. Thank you very much. The amount of sparkling gas. Sparkling gas. Antonio says the product is not really ready yet. It still needs 10 days. Then it will become the finished product, ready for bottling, which will have an incredible floral aroma and, of course, be sparkly. Keeping such a luxurious house clean is probably a lot of work. Obviously, elite horses had been kept here. Have you ever seen such a stable for ordinary horses? Even the ceiling above the horses is a work of art. And this is the courtyard of the house. Its construction started in 1700s. Could you imagine the family history? You look so wonderful today. I dressed up to suit the wine in the bucket of ice because I suspected I would have to wear a cocktail dress. This is very correct. Why? Because we have a very unusual taste testing today. It is special because this wine was born twice. How's that? It is sparkling. Oh, so it's just wine at first and then it becomes sparkling. Listen, before we begin, I want to tell you that I saw a town today that you can get around in half an hour, but fall in love with it for the rest of your life. And I flew over vineyards for the first time in my life. On wings? Like was it a bird. scary? Honestly speaking, it was quite scary. Judging by how bright your eyes are, it was cool. Spectacular. So, are we going to learn something today, or are we going to taste sparkling wine? We're going to combine the two, if you allow. You have to learn to open bottles of sparkling wine properly. There are three to six bars of pressure inside, which is a lot. That is, it can fire the cork. It's kind of a tiny bomb. The pressure inside a car wheel is two bars. And here we have five bars. Twice as much as in a car wheel. Yes, take off the capsule. There's usually a string you can pull. But those often break. Take off the capsule. I'm already scared, to be honest, because it can... Don't be afraid. You're standing near a man who has opened tens of thousands of bottles of sparkling wine in his life. I really love this type of drink. Hold it with your finger, then unscrew the muzzle. Is this called a muzzle? A muzzle is actually a wire that is 51 to 51 and a half centimeters long. And just step aside. Don't. It's better for our cameraman to step back. We rotate the bottle. The cork is held in place. When we feel that it's almost out, we lean it slightly to the side and the wine has to let out a breath. But if someone wants fireworks, we can let go now and see that the cork flies out at the speed of almost 100 kilometers per hour. It might hit someone and it won't be pleasant. Oh. It made a breath. It was not a breath. 
Well, the breath will be with another bottle. I stood too close. He got, I got distracted. distracted. I'll step back. Everything's falling out of my hands. So, Prosecco, that is called Treviso. It is a city, and in fact a production area of Prosecco wine. There is a common area that we just call Prosecco, it is very large. Then there is a smaller one, accordingly, we get a higher quality drink called Prosecco Treviso. Grapes are only grown around Treviso, and there are other sorts that we'll try later. When we pour sparkling wine, let me stand a bit closer to you, and we do that in one go. That is in one movement. In one movement. We can't add more later. That's not desirable. And now we watch the foam. So how do you know how much foam and wine there is? I'll do the same here and then we'll see if I did it right. Let's compare. Yes, let's do that. Fantastic. <laughs> I love Prosecco so much. One sip and I'm gone. Just like wine, Prosecco is made from one grape variety that we call Galera. Certain typical aromas are important for this variety. Spicy! There's a tint of acacia in it, you know, I want to shake the class all the time. But I see you don't do that. Every person who produces such fine wine makes every effort to give us bubbles. By shaking it, we we'll lose the bubbles. Unfortunately, there's always someone who grabs a spoon or a knife and shakes the wine to let all the bubbles out. And then, I have a question. Why would you buy sparkling wine to then make it not sparkling? Friends, don't ever do this again. Please don't shake sparkling wine. Just enjoy the bubbles and the flavor. The next item we're going to try is extraordinary. Its name is Celebre. This one was created in honor of the celebration of the fifth anniversary of the day of receiving the highest quality wine category. Prosecco was solo. Its producer Dalbello made an unusual Prosecco. He was the first on the planet to make Prosecco of the extra broad category. The most dry wine. Prosecco was not as popular five years ago, at least in Kyiv, but then all the young girls started ordering Prosecco in restaurants and cafes. Unfortunately, people in our country call sparkling wine champagne, which is incorrect. When they were ordering champagne, the crisis of 2008 made everyone realize that champagne is very expensive. So they started ordering different sparkling wines. In the end, when they found out that there is Prosecco, incredibly floral, light, easy to drink, and for a reasonable price, of course they started ordering Prosecco. Now there's a different issue. Consumers now call all sparkling wines Prosecco. However, every wine variety has its own name. When we say Prosecco, we mean Prosecco. Champagne is from Champagne, Cava is from Spain, and Sect is from Germany. Quiet, listen. No, it's too early. This is the case when the cork is hard to pull out. I'll even do this, if you don't mind, which you shouldn't. Don't do that. Don't do that, because when you leave the cork alone, it can shoot out. But there's nothing else we can do here. Does Antonio cork the bottles this hard? He did well. Obviously, he chose the bottle just for you, to check the strength of your hands, Vitaly. I feel that it's close, and I let it go. Like this. It breathed, it breathed out, you were right. I also breathed out in relief. <laughs> You're pouring it so beautifully. Do this every time. This requires good sparkling wine. And we understand that not all sparkling wines foam this well. In fact, we can determine their quality by the foam. Let's drink. Let's enjoy the aroma. Okay, where's my intuition? Come to me. Green, fresh. I don't even know. Probably Linden. Is this Linden? The wine that celebrities drink. Ah, the wine that celebrities drink. The glorious Sassolo. Such a beautiful painting. Poetic painting. After all, this is the home of a large number of poets. 
Here we have a black inscription, Dalbello. It was celebre on the previous bottle. There are collectors in the one world who collect these medals, because each bottle has an individual image. I haven't heard of such a form of collecting. I recommend you to get started. Today, already. Okay. A solo Prosecco Superiore Melissimato. This sparkling wine is from a certain year of harvest. This always indicates that the wine material was of higher quality and the producer made all the wine from the yield of one year. Others that have no inscription mean that the producer could have mixed harvests of several years. There is a great device called a cork for sparkling wines. I recommend to anyone who likes sparkling wine to buy such a cork. Why? Because when we leave a bottle of sparkling wine open, we know that all the bubbles will be let out. So we close it again and the problem is solved. Although I think it's a rarity when a bottle of Prosecco is left unfinished. And if some Prosecco is left over, just call your neighbors. They will solve the problem for you. Look at how beautiful its color is. Something rosy. Rose. And it is called Rosa della Regina, which translates as Queen's Rose. Let me remind you that Catherine Cornaro lived in the town of Asolo. And this bottle of Prosecco was made in her honor, right? This is not Prosecco. It's just sparkling wine. It was nice. You're good in opening these. Just look at this beautiful pink foam. Pink wine is a wine for romantics, one of the most celebrated pink sparkling wines in Ukraine. I suggest to free the glasses and move on to the wine made of Marzamino grapes, Mozart's favorite. May I do it the wrong way? Sure. I even want to see it, because you're always doing things the right way. Where should I hide? Behind me. Behind your back? Okay, go ahead. Will it come out on its own? Yes. Let's ask it. Rub it like this. Let me do it. <laughs> Blam! <laughs> this is actually the perfect wine to finish Let's a meal. Let's wait, I want because everything the end to happen of a meal as it should. Needs a dessert. Sweet, tasty. This is actually the perfect wine to finish a meal, because the end of a meal needs a dessert. And if we had red, and especially sweet wine, there must be a dessert. For example, some chocolate and so on. Why aren't you asking me about the password I brought today? I was waiting for you to say it. I've got to say it now, as I might not be able to pronounce it in a few minutes. Listen carefully now. The promised password. Remember it. Be the first to come to the Dalbello Winery. Say the password and get your prize. The password is the name of the town that impressed me, Oslo, but I know that it's not just a town. It's also a wine production zone that is high quality brand wine, which we tasted, is also called a solo Prosecco Superiore. Prosecco Superiore. So the password is Azolo. You know, it was an incredible tasting. It was very sparkly. When it is okay to start drinking Prosecco. You can start drinking Prosecco in the morning, continue during lunch, and finish in the evening. I wish you'd be in this condition, always. <laughs>